ANCOVA is a statistical acronym that stands for Analysis of Covariance. When you perform analysis of covariance in XPSS, these are the types of result output you will get based on the data you entered. The way you should structure your table of raw data to be able to get these types of results and the procedure you should take to enter the raw data into XPSS for the data analysis are two important things that have been fully demonstrated in this video. So, I strongly encourage you to see this video to the end in order to learn the best way to perform and cover analysis in XPSS. But before I go into the demonstrations in XPSS, let me quickly give you the synopsis. My name is Titoken and this is Titoken Max Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. One-way analysis of covariance, or simply put, one-way and cover is a statistical technique used to compare the means of a continuous dependent variable across two or more groups of an independent variable, while statistically controlling for the effect of one or more continuous independent variables known as covariates. Technically, ANCOVA extends the analysis of variance or ANOVA by incorporating the influence of covariates. This technical extension provided by ANCOVA allows for a more accurate assessment of group differences. There is also the incorporation of regression principle in ANCOVA, but I will be silent on that in this demonstration. Basically, for a one-way ANCOVA analysis in XPSS, your table of raw data sets should take the following structure. There should be one nominal or categorical independent variable, which should have two or more levels or groups. There should be one continuous dependent variable, which is the variable of interest, and there should also be one or more continuous covariate variables, also called confounding factors. As you can see from this table of raw data set, there is only one variable of interest, which is my dependent variable, and at least one covariate variable in my data set. This is why this analysis is called one-way ANCOVA. The objective of performing ANCOVA is to determine whether there are statistical differences in the means of the dependent variables across the levels of the independent variables after adjusting for the effect of the covariate. For you to be able to successfully run the ANCOVA analysis in SPSS and have valid results, your dataset must satisfy the following assumptions as parametric conditions that must be met for ANCOVA. But you must note that if you fail to test your data for the assumptions, SPSS will still produce some results for you, but such results will not be valid outcome of what are expected. So it's important that you ensure your set of data satisfies the parametric conditions for one way and cover. The assumptions are 1. Your dependent variable and covariate variables should be measured on a continuous scale. That is, they should be measured at the interval or ratio level. This can be verified by visual inspection. 2. Your independent variable should consist of two or more categorical independent groups. Example of independent variables that meet this criteria is gender, which is just two groups, that is male and female. Another example is ethnicity in Nigeria, which is five groups in this case, that is Igbo, Hausa, Yoruba, Ishan, and Urobo. These assumptions can be verified by visual inspection too. 3. Your data should have independence of observations. This means that there should be no relationship between the observations in each group or between the groups themselves. That is, there must be different participants in each group with no participant being in more than one group. This can be tested by visual inspection or more preferably using W-Watson test statistics. 4. There should be no significant outliers in your dataset. Outliers can create problems when they are present in your data because they can create a negative effect and reduce the validity of your results. One of the simplest ways to test for this assumption is to use a bus plot. 5. Your residuals should be approximately normally distributed for each category of the independent variable. You should test for normality using Shapiro weak test of normality, one to test for within group residual and one to test for overall model fit. 6. There needs to be homogeneity of variances. 
That is, there must be equal variances across your data set. You can test this assumption using Levin's test statistics. 7. The covariance should be linearly related to the dependent variable at each level of the independent variable. You can test this assumption by plotting the grouped scatter plot of the covariate post test scores of the dependent variable and independent variable. 8. Your data should have presence of homoscedasticity. You can test this assumption by plotting scatter plot of the standardized residua and get the predicted value. And 9. There should be homogeneity of regression slopes, which means that there is no interaction between the covariate and the independent variable. Please note that if you do not run the statistical test on these assumptions correctly, the results you get when running a one-way and cover may not be valid. So the onus is on you to ensure that the data you are running for and cover is tenable for the analysis. Now, let me go into XPSS and demonstrate the statistical procedure to perform analysis of covariance. Go to the menu bar and click on Analyze. From the sub-menu, put your cursor on General Linear Model. And from this drop-down options, click on Univariate, and this opens the Univariate dialog box, as you can see. In this dialog box, your variables are in the box on the left. But as you can see, the variable names are represented by their labels. I would like to use their variable names instead. So right click on any of the labels in the box on the left, and from the options that pop up, click on the radio button for display variable names to display the true variable names. This includes the diet, the weight, and the age. Now click on the weight, which is my dependent variable, and click on this transfer arrow key to move it to the dependent variable box. Then click on the diet, which is my independent variable, and use this transfer arrow key to move it to the fifth factor box. The next variable to move is the age, which is my covariate or confounding factor. Click on the age and transfer it to the covariate box. Now, click on the model button to open the model dialog box. In this dialog box, ensure that the default specified model selection is full factorial and the sums of square is type 3. Click Continue to close this dialog box. The next button is Contrast. For this demonstration, I don't intend to change the contrast, so leave the default contrast selection as none and click Continue to close this dialog box. Now, open the Plot button. In this dialog box, the only factor available in the box on the left is Diet, so click on this Transfer arrow key to transfer it to the horizontal as its box. Thereafter, click Add to add the diet variable to what should be plotted by the uncover function. Then click Continue to close this dialog box. The Save is the next button to open. Do not check any box here as doing so will not affect the uncover results. Click Continue to close this dialog box. Finally, click on the Options button. In this dialog box, transfer the two items in the box at the left to the display means box at the right. Then check the box for compare mean effect and click on the button for confidence interval adjustment. From the drop down options, click on Beforoni to select it. Then come down to the display section. In this place, check the box for descriptive statistics to produce the mean and standard deviation. Check the box for estimates of effect size to give account of the variance explained in percentages. And finally, check the box for homogeneity test to test whether the error variance of the dependent variable is equal across groups. Click Continue to close this dialog box. Now, click OK to perform the uncover analysis and produce the results in the output window. As you can see, the results have been produced. Now, the next step is to interpret the results. So, watch out for the next video where I will demonstrate how to interpret the uncover analysis results in great details. This is how to perform one way analysis of covariance in XPSS, and I hope you will be able to replicate this procedure to analyze your own data. But right now, we have come to the end of this video. If you like this video and you want to see more video contents like this, please like this video by giving it a thumbs up 
share this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel to receive notification every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription. Thanks for liking this video and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.